Welcome to Attack of Opportunity. Hello and welcome to another exciting episode of Attack of Opportunity, where we take the chance to interview, well, lately we've been interviewing content creators. We've even done a little hands across the water, some international action. And today we are actually reaching out to fellow Pathfinders, those in the community that are making content for audio, video, uh, podcasting, book writing, all, any, any, any pathfinder creator we can get our hands on. And I have the very, very fortunate and distinct pleasure today to talk to the man from Maximum Pew Pew, Jared Bailey. Jared, thank you so much for being on the show today. Jeff, thank you for having me. I, I certainly appreciate it. How are you doing today? Oh, not bad, not bad. So, you know, well, perhaps <clears throat> this is a small show. Maybe you don't know, but the question we like to ask everyone every victim we get in the chair for starters is how did you first know that you were a geek a nerd one of us one of us pretty good question i probably about middle school when people started to be very free with those terms and think that they were derogatory in some way but you know the the geeks and the nerds were actually the nice people you wanted to hang out with so i quickly realized okay that's not as derogatory as they think it is so yeah, probably about 12, 13 years old was when I started to uh, get there and really embrace that particular term. Well, I certainly uh, I certainly don't mean any offense um, when I use the term uh, geek or nerd or whatever. It's it's a self, you know, self-reflecting joke. I know the further, oh, back, further yeah. back you go, it, it could be a little offensive. Uh, but honestly, I find you, you can't use any term today without pissing somebody off. Um, so I'm just trying to own it. Um, so my next question for you, sir, uh, was there a defining moment for you or a gateway drug, like a video game, cosplay card games or something that, you know, really got you into the genre of fantasy sci-fi and beyond the RPG world? Lord, I, I got a uh, got Nintendo or a NES when I was about five years old, and I don't think I've put it down since in the past like 30 <laughs> years. So. Um, video games. <laughs> there are newer systems, just so you know. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah, but I mean, I, that's the one to kind of always come back to. So, video games have always been like my medium of choice, and that kind of got me interested in other mediums. I grew up in small town West Virginia. We didn't have any comic book stores. We didn't have any game stores. There was no miniatures or anything. So really, you. That, that was it like you could go to kb's or you could go to walmart or something you could get yourself a video game and that that's what you had until we started to become a little bit more cosmopolitan and get more stores and you know <laughs> branch out a little bit you would think that living close to sort of like college campuses that there would be more availability of this stuff so i, I talk with people and i feel like i missed out because like i didn't have an ability to purchase a comic book so like you know all this new media and stuff it's like uh, I, I don't know like i just sort of a, a pariah in that sense but no it, it's always been video games it still is video games um and that was kind of the the gateway into everything and, and i feel like i still use video games as kind of an inspiration for some of the homebrew stuff i do with some of my games okay cool cool uh how so you say like you've been going on this for a while how long have you been a gamer well, I will be probably close to 30 years now. I mean, I, I know that I probably had some type of infatuation with them before I got my first NES, but, you know, seriously, probably about 30 years at this point. Wow. <laughs> you're, you're encroaching upon uh, my territory now. Um, <laughs> so, um, with your your play, you know, you're in West Virginia. You're playing your video game or whatever. What what got you into the like the the RPG, the role playing game aspect, whether it was through video game or otherwise? Um, I'm trying to think of the very first RPG that I probably played. I can't think of any on NES. It is probably either Final Fantasy, a Chrono Trigger, um, maybe uh, even Pokemon would have been a, a really good like gateway role playing game. Um, but those were probably the ones that I first got into as far as like RPGs are concerned. Uh, probably my first taste of an actual pen and paper RPG was there was a, a few friends in middle school whose older brother ran AD&D. So I was kind of getting like this third hand experience of all these like Dungeons and Dragons stories. And 
you know, I was able to uh, play like this one shot that nobody knew what they were doing. It was 12 year olds trying to replicate a D and D without rule books or anything. So like, that was kind of like my first experience with actual like pen and paper role playing games. And it wasn't a negative experience, but it certainly was a, a little bit unorthodox. <laughs> okay. Um, <clears throat> sorry, I'm having a little trouble this morning. No, so, it's it's that time of year. <clears throat> yeah, it's a. Uh, pardon me. So, a geek, a nerd, a gamer. This is not uncommon in today's gaming age. But now, the big question. What made you decide to start making your own content, putting something out there, sharing your game with the world to become a content creator on the web? Uh, so uh, as far as the podcast, uh, this came hand in hand with the launch of Starfinder, which was a uh, Paizo's foray into sort of the, the sci-fi universe. And I know you talk a lot of with people about Pathfinder. So mm -hmm. for those that aren't familiar with Starfinder, Starfinder released uh, August 2017 at Gen Con. And as much as I like fantasy, I like sci-fi like even more. Like, that's a bit more of my jam. So, you know, Pathfinder kind of got me into this hobby, but Starfinder is really where like my interest lied. And I was, I was all in with the launch. And I wanted to run Dead Suns, which was the first adventure path that Paizo was putting out for uh, Starfinder. And I've had so many live games kind of fizzle out. You know, we get through a book and, you know, life happens or whatever. So Maximum Pew Pew was actually an accountability project that's like, okay, we're, I'm going to force myself to run through these books and I'm going to have the entirety of the internet keep me accountable <laughs> because I'm going to be putting out episodes of this so other people can listen. Uh, also, I came from a, uh, uh, my probably 99% of my experience with Pathfinder was with the Pathfinder Society organized play campaign. So uh, for those that are not familiar, it allows people to kind of jump in and jump out of games. Uh, there's a continuous storyline, but you don't have to play with the same four or five or six people at the table every single week. So, you know, you can drop in every week, every month you know, every couple of months and you're going to be able to find a table with people to play with. And yeah, I was GMing a lot. I'm actually a five star Pathfinder Society GM. So I've got a lot of uh, GMing experience under my belt. And every single time I came to the table, I was sharing a story with up to six other people. And I loved that. Like, you know, all the time that I was investing, multiply it by six for the amount of enjoyment that people were getting out of it. And now I'm kind of replicating that same experience with the podcast and getting way more than one table's worth of listeners at every single session. So uh, it it kind of replicates that enjoyment and that thrill that I got out of doing a society uh, GMing as well. Yeah, it's it's addictive once you get going. I know. Now, just just to be clear, you're talking about the Pathfinder Society is at your local gaming store. Um, it's a it's a way of playing instant D and D playing instant pathfinder where you bring registered characters. And like you said, Jared, here's a registered DM and Paizo puts out these. I like to like, they look like a sort of a, a D and uh, a fantasy version of like a James Bond pulp fiction. There's lots of politics, quick action. There's always some fights in there. Always got to think, always got to use your skill set. you know, that kind of thing. You always got to, and it's not like the heroes fight the dragon kind of thing. It's, I really like how they use a lot of factions and politics and dirty corporations yeah. as it were, and shipping companies and, and this kind of thing are the bad guy. And, uh, you know, like you said, you're in and out and the players get their, their boons and, and they advance their characters and then they can come to another gaming store or get into another session with another DM and pick up where they left off. Or, you know, the DM says, I'm running this part of this adventure and they have a chance to, you know, advance as opposed to the online aspect where you can go to fantasy grounds, you can go to roll 20 and stuff and jump in those games. I just, just wanted to clarify that for you, but uh, no, that's great, man. Like good for you. Um, so, was there was there a specific inspiration for you for the sci-fi side to pick um, Starfinder or to like to get into that type of podcast? Um, was there like was there someone like I understand you're already you're already doing so sort of like the private sector or you know you're you're going from game shop to game shop and you want to big it, get it bigger and get on the net? Where was there someone a streamer or a YouTuber or something that you were exposed to or a podcaster? 
and it was it just clicked for you starfighters coming and you're like i could do that just the way these people are and you know made you choose the podcast over video or that kind of thing was there an inspiration was there somebody out there that really sold it to you know what i'm saying right um podcasts were attractive because i have to commute quite a bit for work um so when i was in school i had to do these uh internships all around the state and uh, i was driving as much as an hour each way and i needed some entertainment and in rural west virginia if you don't like country music then you might as well just turn the radio off so i turned to podcasts and one that I really enjoyed was back when uh, Penny Arcade's Acquisitions Incorporated was starting off way before it was actually, you know, video streams and at PAX East, PAX West, all these places. Before we had the C team, we had the podcast. And, you know, that was kind of my way in. I could listen to these stories on the way to work and, you know, it gave me something to enjoy on those hour commutes back and forth. And that was kind of my inspiration. I still follow um, Acquisitions Incorporated. I still follow C Team. Those are probably my two favorites that are online right now that I, I like to watch. And I feel like I've taken a, a lot of inspirations from uh, Jerry Hawkins as a GM. Uh, I enjoy his uh, his GMing style, so um, I feel like I, I get a lot of inspiration from that. But I didn't really feel like the I didn't feel the video aspect. Um, I feel like there's a little bit more anonymity with the audio, especially if I'm inviting if I'm inviting some of my friends to be able to do this. So, uh, audio audio itself was seemed to be the medium. Plus, where I commute, that's what I was able to listen to the most. So, I mean, it, it spoke to me uh, personally as well. Yeah, you were expo- I see, that's what you were exposed to. The Penny Arcade inspires you. I remember when Penny Arcade first came out. I wish I'd taken it more seriously back in the day. Um, I'd spoken in an interview about listening to the Sunday Night Funnies and Dr. Demento when Weird Al Yank first came out and they were running George Carlin at night, like the comedian aspect. And then in the 90s, Penny Arcade popped up and I saw it, I listened to it, and I didn't really know what it was. And I, I'd moved on, you know, there's something else. My kids were small. And I really wish I had sort of paid more attention, went, oh, I get this, you know, got, got into this sort of earlier because as any content creator will tell you it's exhausting and we're having the time of our lives it is so much fun yeah it's such a rush um so you talked about your crew your cast um so where do you create your content from do you have a live studio do they come in the house are you mics around the table you know with the pate are you in your kitchen room living room have you set up a studio or do you do the online thing like we do where you're in a zoom call and everyone's all over the place and you're trying to record of one end or the other so pretty much 100% of our gaming content is recorded about 20 feet over there. So I'm in the... <laughs> right over there. <laughs> yep. So I'm in the uh, basement of my house right now, and I've got this nook that wasn't really good for anything. It was uh, carpeted. It's well lit. And um, I treated it with some blackout curtains to absorb some of the sound. I was mm-hmm. able to put some tables there. And it's a nice dedicated space for us to be able to do our gaming. Um all the players are people that I've met through our local organized play campaign. Um, I'm not afraid to say I'm in the Charleston, West Virginia area. And uh, I think we have probably one of the best Pathfinder and Starfinder lodges in the country. You can fight me about that. Uh, we have, <laughs> we have okay. uh, three going on five, five star game masters. We run eyes of the 10, an average of one to two times a year. Um, we're running four tables weekly of Pathfinder and Starfinder. We have a lot of sessions coming through there. And a lot of that success has come from a lot of people willing to be game masters. Mm -hmm. So uh, when we run Starfinder or when we run Pathfinder at our tables, I'm not the only GM at that table. There's at least three other people with as much GMing experience or more as me. So it's nice to not have to rely on myself as being the the rules master. Everyone there is (laughs) super seriously. So GMs make the absolute best and worst players at the same time. (laughs) And I can see that dichotomy, but thankfully everything has gone pretty smoothly so the cadre of players that i selected for our first you know our our dead sons adventure path three of them were ground level starfinder gms one of them was 
uh, experienced with Pathfinder but hadn't touched Starfinder yet and doesn't have any um, have any game mastering experience. Mm -hmm. But there are so much experience at this table with this game system. One of the major complaints people have with Starfinder is starship combat. Everyone there knows the rules, like backwards and forwards. There's no struggle. I don't have to race through the rule book. Somebody knows what their role is at, at which position of the starship. And I mean, it's so snappy. It, yeah, it, it keeps, it keeps the flow it going. So yeah, I we recently started live streaming and or and recording video as opposed to audio and it, it really shakes you up there is no oh hang on a second we'll just edit this out and look something up and then you can edit the audio later or you know if there's something right, real, right? you're live streaming you're just looking at the camera going and da, 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 right you look this up and we'll talk about this and you know you got just got to keep it going yeah stop. you have to delegate a little bit more but my current setup i use a zoom live track l12 to digitally record all the audio mm-hmm I've got some basic Behringer microphones on all the player positions and an Audio Technica AT2020 on the GM position. Um, we can support up to seven people at the table, and that's more a uh, physical constraint of the space versus the limitations of the actual equipment that we're using. Okay. Um, I, I take the audio, edit it with um, Kakos's uh, Reaper. Uh, DAW software, which is amazing. Please look into it if you're looking to upgrade your audio editing game. But uh, everything we do is live because all of my players, all of my GMs, everyone was in this area. Uh, well, it I was. Guess, I guess, let me stop you there. Okay, so um, like this, this is something that works for you, right? Right. A, a lot yeah. of us out there use the free software Audacity, myself included. So could you tell us a little bit, yeah. like without shamelessly plugging Reaper, could you tell me something that you enjoy about it, something over someone like Garage or Audacity? Okay, so I came from Audacity. I probably used it for maybe the first nine months of uh, the the lifespan of Maximum PP. Sorry, I've got this metal bar here and I keep flicking it. It sounds like a, a door chime. So apologies for that. <laughs> Um, so the best way to describe it, audacity is to MS paint as Reaper is to Photoshop. So, um, audacity will get you where you need to go, but a lot of the editing that you do with audacity is destructive. So you can't get that content back. Uh, if you try to do any type of noise canceling or anything like that, it takes about five minutes to render and then, like, oh, that doesn't sound too great. Undo. Let's try another five minute render to see if we can get it where we need to go. Mm -hmm. Reaper, all of these effects are kind of like filters like you would see in Photoshop where you can turn them on and off as needed. You can adjust the intensity as needed. Um, renders, you can kind of set renders up. So after you do your whole workflow and you're done for the night, you can hit the render button and it can spend the hour it needs to do all your renders and it's ready for you the next day. Um, oh, time, a lot time, more power. time saving. You've sold me already because <laughs> just so yes, much time it, invested in editing. It will save you time. Um, you can set up presets. So when you, uh, you know, I've got all of my microphones set up for all of my players. So I know what, you know, one of my players, his name is Matt. I know what Matt's going to sound like. I can get his equalizer stuff set up for his microphone. So that was the other upgrade I made too, was I went from a, uh, zoom H4N, uh, which kind of recorded the whole table in stereo to individual microphones. So it makes it a lot easier if, you know, somebody sneezes or coughs or, um, you know, all these little things that can be destructive and sort of cover up what somebody's saying. Mm -hmm. Now I've got them individualized and it's a whole lot easier to pick these things out and I can, you know, edit out this player's cough and now nobody knows. It just kind of sounds like it's in the background and not like it happened right here. So no, no, that. no, I understand. I, I, for one, take audio quality very seriously. Um, it's an uphill battle when you're trying to do it online. Like I said, there's so many technical issues and we try so hard to right. get as much quality out of the limited resource that we have. Um, and then, like you said, there's time, there's so much time and there's one show as opposed to a plethora of shows, which brings me to my next question. Uh, it's a distinct pleasure to meet someone that is going at a sort of a mini network as opposed to a single podcast and feels my pain um because <laughs> you, you've got the maximum pew pew has like a uh, a couple of shows under its banner right so the main show we have right now is dead sons which is named after the eponymous adventure path released by paizo for the starfinder role-playing game we currently also do a show called uh jewel of the south which 
uses the Tales from the Loop rule set from Free League and, or sorry, Free League and published by Modifius. Mm-hmm. It is a alternate history 1980s sort of adventure uh, that came out pre Kids on Bikes. If uh, people have heard of that particular role playing game, it's sort of in the same strain. It's a Stranger Things kind of ripoff. S- Stranger Things, Goonies, r- ripoff is a strong statement to make when it came out before Stranger Things. Sorry. So um, <laughs> no, it's fine. But <laughs> any. So anytime I pitch the uh, RPG, I say if you enjoyed Stranger Things, if you enjoyed Goonies, if you enjoyed these 80s era teens getting into mischief, solving mysteries, this is the game for you because it's so mechanics light and story heavy driven. Uh, there's yeah. literally five GMs Sco- at that Scooby table. Scooby-Doo with Labrador. Scrappy and Flim Flam put in in the 80s and they're all wearing tracksuits as opposed to the 70s Scooby-Doo where they just have the van running around. Right, so... <laughs> um, it's a very solid rule set. Uh, recently, they uh, Free League successfully kickstarted a sequel called Things from the Flood, which kind of takes place in the late 90s. So now you're playing, in, instead of playing the kids in Stranger Things, you're now playing the teens where the threat of death and bodily mutilation is a very real threat. So it plays as a completely different game. So instead of like, oh, we're kids having adventures, it's like, we're teens and there's a lot of strife between us and we're still trying to figure out what our bodies are doing and there's mass murderers around here and <laughs> we're the ones that have to figure this out. Prime so for it, prime it, prime gaming adventure. Like it, <laughs> Yeah, so it's a bit more like a scream in that particular sense. It oh, kind of harkens cool. back one of those 90s horror movies where these bad things could be happening so is it just Um, the two shows or i thought you had a third well we're um dead sons uh jewel the south uh we'll be recording some stuff for uh west of perdition which is going to be our things from the flood series coming Mm -hmm. up soon probably next week um we've done some extra life content so i'm part of a uh extra life team team wb fox which is raising money for cincinnati children's hospital for fox g1 uh, syndrome uh trying to find a cure and treatment for fox g1 syndrome uh we've done some uh charity streams which we hit uh predation which is a cypher system game we've done some fifth ed with that as well uh, in a month, we're going to be recording some playtest stuff for a game that my friend is doing called um, Warriors of Eternity, which is sort of a He-Man and She-Ra inspired uh, D20 system game that he's going to be putting out. Right. Uh, we There's a lot of stuff going on right now, that, but, you know, our, our mainstay, our you know, our weekly, you can set your clock by it, is going to be our Dead Sons, and then on occasion we have some bonus content. Oh, um... Recently, Freely got the rights to the Alien movie franchise to do a role-playing game. So we did the uh, Alien RPG quick start adventure entitled Chariot of the Gods, which was an eight-part series that was uh, still sci-fi, but a very different tone from Dead Sons. And I would encourage everyone to When you said we out. got the rights, how did you go out and get movie rights again? So I, I didn't. Sorry. I apologize. Uh, Free League. Uh, the publishers of Tales from the Loop, Things from the Flood, Coriolis, they got the rights to the Alien franchise to be able to do a role-playing game, which should be coming out this winter, if memory serves me correctly. But those who pre-ordered the the game to be released, uh, they brought out like a 168 page quick start guide for you know those that want to kind of look at the rules and learn how to play with an adventure and the adventure was called chariot of the gods and i ran that as part of the podcast so i I didn't do anything except throw money at free league to get the game and then i ran it on the podcast so that that's what i did (laughs) but no No, that that, that sounds really cool it's a you're you're going through so much and you're doing so much right now it's really a lot to take in so how long have you been doing this like how long have you been creating content Creating podcast content that would have been around September or October of 2017. So it would have been shortly after the Dead Suns Adventure Path came out. Mm -hmm. And we're still running it because, you know, we've got five people that we have to coordinate and everyone's got a life and you got to try to get all that figured out. No, with Um, with Starfinder being brand new and Dead Suns being like the first Adventure Path, um, 
how do you get on with you know your competition as it were um is there is there another podcast that you respect shall we say um for what they're doing or their angle like uh, the great thing about this is you could listen to the same show the same material again 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 a completely different story different dm different players right. and you know it would be like watching star trek or star wars over and over again with a different cast um that's the beauty of podcasting uh and and people can pick and choose their favorite cast or chemistry and even though the story is different like the actual script the the adventure like what they go through the monster at the end of the, the hangar bay and blah 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 you know is relatively the same um so I, i'm not asking you to like to, to plug the competition but i am curious like is there someone else there that that you believe is uh, you know is doing good with it you know uh, other charity work or that you know you that you respect i'll i'll be honest like i'm in a point in my life where i don't have a lot of extraneous time to be able to listen to some of the others and our mutual friend at uh, what do you do pods is tracking i think he's up to 97 98 different pathfinder and starfinder related podcasts yeah, yes so shout, shout out to jason ellis of what do you do pods for grabbing the entire pathfinder community and putting it posting us on twitter going hey this guy's got a show and it's this episode and that guy's got a show and these girls are doing this and i love that guy <laughs> yeah he posts yeah. everything jason, it's great jason's the best yeah. quote me on that yeah, no, so, I, I agree. I actually, I, um, I'm hoping to interview him. Uh, I'd like to get my hands on him. We've been talking. The guy is so busy, though, but um, hoping when yeah. he gets settled, you know. And, yeah, and regretfully, that's kind of where I am with my life right now, too. I mean, I don't have as much commute time, which was how I was able to ingest podcasts earlier. Mm. I had um, one video game-related podcast that I listen to that kind of keeps my schedule busy, you know, and... When I get home from work, I've got a wife, I've got a daughter, you know, I've got all these other obligations. So it's kind of very difficult to follow along with those. But I don't view other podcasts as competition, really, because in my mind, a rising tide, a, a rising tide lifts all ships. That's something I learned in school. You know, it's hard to look at all these other things that are doing the same thing as you and say, they're taking off my plate. They're competing with me. People uh, enjoy content and we kind of push, we, we push everybody forward. You know, this is, oh yeah. you know, you, you have your own podcast. I don't view this as competition. We're collaborating. We're learning from one another. We're doing awesome things. And hopefully we, you know, take something from this experience that we can push forward. We're only making ourselves better. Steel sharpens steel. I, so, I truly, you know, I truly believe that people take the sort of tongue-in-cheek joke which is attack of opportunity where i take the opportunity to tell my own story or tell uh, an anecdote while i'm interviewing someone and yeah there's a lot of shameless plugging going on but show me someone else besides jason ellis that that is you know running around interviewing everybody else like you said rising tide um the reason i started podcasting three years ago was to try and do mummy's mask and we never got it off the ground we're still struggling and i reached out to rick sanchez who's doing great with find the path podcast i love this podcast because well he's doing mummy's mask and i just love the whole indiana jones thing yeah and i you know very sheepishly kind of went hi this is me and i have to confess you know i am trying to get this off the ground and technically you you know would you see me as competition and i just wanted to reach out i'd like to interview you, you know, all this stuff and he said no no and he quoted exactly what you just said the rising tide lifts all ships that's what he believes and i've been so pleased to meet so many people in the pathfinder community specifically that think that way and yeah. he along with jason ellis and um like i said we've also run out of interviewing each cast member and some of the content creators and, and audio and and music producers and stuff that have helped us with our show attack of opportunity kind of ran drive guests and it's people like rick it's people like um jason ellis that made me realize that i need to shift the focus of this show and use it not just to go he you know look at me um but the community would like to know more about guys like you, you know, how you got going, how you got started. I'm hoping the show, the guests that I bring on here will in, will inspire um, right. other people that are trying podcasting and they get to that point. And you know what I'm talking about where they're like three months in, six months in, a year in, and they're really struggling with audio problems, with casting problems. And they, they get to that. Is it worth it? Should I put it down? 
you know, because right. because it's not going anywhere. And you know, you got to ask yourself: Are you doing this because you love to do it? Are you doing this because you expected to be some sort of overnight, you know, oh wow, we're doing so great type of thing? I'm the the market's so saturated. I'm under no delusion that my podcast is going to take off anywhere, but. I know that I enjoy re-listening to the stuff that we've recorded. I get a good chuckle every single time I re-listen to the sessions and edit them and put them out there. And looking at the downloads, I am providing content to more than just the four people at my table. There's somebody else out there that's getting some benefit from this. And, you know, it, it's, it's that society thing again. I invest four hours of my time at that table and get... 24 hours of enjoyment collectively back out of it and it's just been amplified by this project and that makes me feel like it's worth it and i don't get too hung up on download numbers it's just there are people that are listening to it that oh, makes yeah. it worth it yeah yeah anybody I mean, even friends and family i mean um i've invested a couple grand at this point <laughs> into all this stuff you know and we're still trudging along the barely known and, uh, you know, my wife asked me, like, if we won the lottery, would you still be doing this? I'd be like, yes. Yes, I would. Yeah. I, I would dig up Larry Elmore and get him to paint the wall here in the studio. <laughs> and I would do this and, you know, bring more people. In. Uh, that kind right. of thing. Just cause, we don't just run do ads. It. We don't have Patreon. We don't have, you know, I don't. Anytime I ask for money, it's for Extra Life. Mm -hmm. uh, I've got a few products that we've been selling. Like I got some dice made. All the proceeds are going to Extra Life. If you want to support us and throw money at our cause, I'm just going to put it directly towards charity. Like that's not why I'm doing this. Oh, that's you know? great. No, so, dude, I mean, you I, are you are a rare breed. So most people have to wait till they make it before they can sort of afford to do that, or they start doing that for exposure. And no, th uh, this no, is good a hobby. This is a hobby that I enjoy. I'm not looking to make a dollar off of it. If I can break even on a few things, that's way more than i anticipated would ever happen but you know that's you're you're not going to hear ad as of 2019 uh you're not going to hear ad reads you're not going to hear you know get your bomba socks and your audible or you know support our patreon yeah, for, no 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 yeah like the, yeah, the, you know i want to be heard i'm not going to you know i'm not going to pay all my stuff so yeah the the um the youtube uh the speaker stuff everything we're on they're all asking us to monetize and it's like no <laughs> You know, like we have Patreon, I'll admit, um, but that's a reflection of, like I said, if the fans really like what you're doing, they're like, here, we want to help as opposed to right. j jamming and advertising where the big guy wins and you have to get to your 100,000 views to get your first 100 bucks away. It's not worth it. And it turns so no. many people off that you fill your podcast or something with advertisements. No, like we won't do it. Um, and I'm actually very pleased to meet you, sir. Someone like yourself that just goes right to like your setup. Which brings me kind of to my next personal question. Uh, what do you do yeah. for a living? So I am actually a pharmacist for a group of federally qualified health centers here in um, the West Virginia area. I uh, currently help manage about four pharmacies at the moment. Okay, cool. So um, we have a couple shows under your banner, uh, more on the way. What about... Um, we were just talking about, you know, the, the numbers and things doesn't, doesn't matter. But what about you going to a convention or gatherings where, you know, fans can meet you or you could meet oh, people, boy. other content creators and stuff, you know, doing the hobnobbing and stuff. Like, I'd love to fly to the States and and meet, you know, all, all the fellow content creators and stuff. Um, Thank you for bringing this up because... <laughs> uh, where can we find you? Well, no. Uh, so Charleston, West Virginia has two major gaming conventions. Um this past July was Charcon, uh, C H A R C O N. It is pretty much the gaming convention for the whole state of West Virginia. I was running some uh, things from the flood, in addition to a Fate Accelerated Homebrew that was based off of the uh, John Wick movie franchise universe, uh, and it was codenamed the Continental. Uh, that was a good time. Oh, that's cool. Uh, I love the gold yeah, coins. Uh, I just run around with the little gold coins. and. Uh, yep, the, that was my fate ship. I had some uh, fate gold coins that I gave the players to use as their fate ships, if you're familiar with uh, fate or fate accelerated. So are the players uh, all like the assassins in this world or different? Like Yes, so basically it's the, um, and I hope to actually, I'm working on a 
expansion slash plug-in for Fate Accelerated called Those Who Serve. Uh, that'll be going up on itch.io here as soon as I get it done. But uh, it will be basically all those notes that I took for this particular game session into something that you could run at home. Uh, and you're not playing as John Wick. You're playing as people in the John Wick universe with, you know, all this rich tapestry of, you know, the Continental Hotels and the sommeliers and, you know, all these other, you know, different, you know, dinner reservations and all, all these other code oh, words. Oh, yeah, yeah, they, yeah. They're basically yeah, a was... world of assassins. Yeah. Uh, but that's what you're doing. You, you've got, you know, a table of very capable assassins that are taking on this job and making money or whatever. And they have their own yeah. problems and all problems and whatever but it's got to keep um, it in the shadows that's the best part about playing a modern game it's like you you can't really let the public you know in on what's going on it, it's not like a massive slaughter down at the train station which could have happened it's all got to be finesse right and, and, and you know you're gonna sorry sorry yeah. I, I just love that stuff no, I love that's James <laughs> like, um, really cool. that's something i'm currently working on right now is able to play test at charcon in two weeks is charcon bonus round which is a smaller event in flatwoods west virginia uh, I will be running some things from the flood there as well, as well as helping with the play test for Warriors of Eternity and a play test for a new Hyperlight Drifter RPG that will be coming out in the future. Cool. Very cool. So where can we find you in social media? Like uh, what what podcatchers? Do you have Facebook? Uh, I know you're on Twitter because that's how I found you. And yep. I also found you through Jason Ellis. Uh, he has the What Do You Do? on Twitter where like he said he does not self promote he promotes and gathers podcasts most of them uh Pathfinder Starfinder specific to let the community know where you could find the rest of us but where can we find yeah. you so uh you can find me on Facebook just look for maximum pew pew you can find me on Twitter at maximum pew pew you can also follow, find me on the uh what do you do discord server I'm pretty active there. I absolutely love that community. So drop by, say hello. Um, I don't get to travel too terribly much. So uh, Charcon and Charcon bonus round, if you want to meet up in person, that would be amazing. Uh, but those are probably the best ways to get in touch with me. If you have uh, any questions or want to check out uh, content, uh, as far as the podcast, uh, all of the major syndicators. So you can find us on iTunes. You can find us on Google podcasts. Um, any of the major ones you should be able to find us if you can't find us let me know and i'll try to correct that yeah yeah definitely um now like i said you you're you're self-motivated you're self-funded and anything you're coming your way you are doing great things with like extra life do you have any merchandise the fans can buy where can we find it like a t-shirt or something and you know is that also something that's geared toward uh, a charity we have a, a teespring outlet teespring at rollmongers mm -hmm. and they list like plugged right in while you're making your shirts and stuff i found this lovely list of charities and they're saying do you want to take some of your profit and 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 you know put it towards this and i'm like yes i do <laughs> you know um we, we try to donate to ms um but what okay. about you so right now i have one product available that I, I don't really have a storefront. It's basically just drop me a message and I'll ship it to you. But we've got some uh, custom D6s with the Max Pew logo on the six. Um, I recently published a Things from the Flood adventure entitled Head, Heart, Hands, Hell, which is a 4-H uh, adventure Um I won't spoil anything there, but okay. it's a, <laughs> I was like, oh, is he going to tell us? <laughs> no, well, I, I've ran it, and that's also available on my itch.io store. So if you go to itch.io slash maxpew, uh, you can uh, check out our Head, Heart, Hands, Hell, and that's also where uh, those who serve will appear once I get that finalized. Well, tell us about the dice again. Like, how do you how do you get your own custom dice? How did that happen? Can you send me a link? So, uh, so you go to Chessex and you tell them, I want custom dice. <laughs> and the very fine people there will show you all the designs they have. Oh, and so you, you walked in. This is not like a website where you can. Oh, no, you, you can go to their website. Oh, okay. There's no Chess Charleston, West Virginia. Good Lord. It's <laughs> Sorry, sorry. But, I, uh, no, yeah. no, you're good. So, okay. um, yeah, so Chessex has their own website. Uh, you speak to one of their uh, individuals over email. They will send you a proof in a ridiculously short period of time and you can decide how many uh, dice you want from there and then they uh after it was about a six to eight week 
production time they gave me this big brick of dice that was amazing to behold um, i'm currently <laughs> selling those for um two dollars a piece and a dollar of that goes towards my uh extra life campaign like there i said uh, yeah that's... cincinnati children's hospital uh i'm like i said i published uh, head heart hands hell uh those will also be two dollars a piece a dollar of it will be going towards the uh extra life and when uh those who serve comes out um, I'm probably just going to go purely digital on that one, uh, pay what you want with all proceeds going towards the, uh, Kanawha Charleston Humane Society. Wow. No, dude. <laughs> Respect. That is so awesome. Well, I, I'm almost afraid to ask this guy any more questions because he's getting really, he's getting really saintly. We're going to start calling you Saint Jared. <laughs> uh, we were just, just by the time here. Uh, I'd like to, me I, we've been talking with Jared Bailey. Uh, known as uh, Ghibli, Ghibli, Jaylee, sorry, Jaylee Bly, J Jaylee no, Bly, um, on Discord, and you can find him haunting, you know, with a what do you do Discord alongside myself. You can find him on Facebook because the maximum pew pew, and we do mean like pew 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 pew. You know, it started with oh, the old yeah, joke. Absolutely. You know, yeah, yeah. This, um, our guy uh, Matt Witt found out I was interviewing you, and he loves the name because he's a big Star Wars fan. He's like, oh, I, I want to be in on this. You know, what time are you interviewing him? Yeah. I'm like ten. He's like, no, I'm not getting up for. That. <laughs> <laughs> well, he had a concert last night. He's a singer, so it's just like, oh, oh yeah, you know. yeah. Um, you gotta take care of yourself. Yeah, yeah. It's it's amazing. I can get him on the show after he blows his vocals out, like on a Saturday night when we do any <laughs> Sunday work. But uh, I'd like to thank you, Jarrett, for being on the show and and teaching us so much that someone can do with their content. You know, like as as you are advancing, as the tide is rising, all ships, you are immediately trying to give back to the community, give to an excellent cause, an excellent life. And I, for one, thank you. And thank you so much Jeff, for being on the show. You. Jeff, thanks for having me. You all have a wonderful day. <laughs> you too. Well, that's all the time we have for today. I've got to run. And you've been listening to Attack of Opportunity, one of several shows under the Rollmongers Podcasting Network banner. Uh, we are produced by Dicewise Entertainment, and you can find a whole bunch of stuff under our banner, but not today. No, no, no. You got to go and find and check out Maxim Pew Pew and listen to him on your commute because Jarrett, unfortunately, doesn't have time to listen to your stuff. So do him a favor. Listen to his stuff. <laughs> You're in the commute. You're in the commute. <laughs> He's making praying hands and if you get this, listening to this, the audio. This is also audio as well as strict video. And we will see you next time.